This is Wide Open with Chris Barant. All right, what's up, everybody? <clears throat> I would call this podcast Wide Open with Chris Brandt, but we have been all but wide open on the podcast. Crickets. <laughs> this is how well the podcasts have been going <laughs> this season. <laughs> let's, do, let's do one more. Yeah, that's exactly how good the podcasts have been going. Um, so come to find out, it requires a little bit of time to actually do a podcast and we were a little understaffed, a little overworked and we couldn't do it. So, but we're back. We're back. We're back. Well, for a couple. No, we're back. We can do it. Kyle's going to have to call in cause he's freaking going home, pouring concrete <laughs> next week. Bubba, I don't even know. Where the hell are you going to go? Um, you don't know. Yeah, You're I don't homeless. know. <laughs> All right. Um, so anyway, we wanted to, um, man, we wanted to catch up. Uh, we've had an incredible season at BBA again. Um, as you can see, our two beauties here sitting in front of us, we've had, uh, it's been a big year. You know, the model launch of the Players 2022s. Big news, big shakeup in the industry, something that um, I, myself, I've, I've known about for a while. Kyle, you've got to be in on that deal for a little bit, which has been fun. You've got to ride. Um, you got to ride pretty close to production this January. Mm -hmm. We'll get into some stories about that, <laughs> which I still shake my head about some of those things that we got into, <laughs> but, um, but they're here. And we wanted to help you guys out and talk about them. Um, Snow check has been to say the word chaotic would be a little bit of an understatement. Um, everyone super excited about all the things players brought out. Uh, but come to find out it's hard to get one. <laughs> um, you know, the Patriot boost sled sold out and pretty much dang near the first day um, or first couple of days. And, you know, I've gotten a lot of questions. Well, why did players do that? Uh, why, you know, I, I mean, literally people upset that they can't get one, which understandable. So we'll kind of dive into that a little bit, but, you know, I think the biggest thing I wanted to, to touch base on is, you know, we've gotten to spend a lot of time on these and, you know, these are still pre-production units, but, um, pretty close to what you guys are going to get to, to ride, uh, come next fall, late fall and winter. And, you know, Kyle, you've ridden, you've ridden them a bunch. Um, it'll be cool to hear your first impression. I mean, you know, to hear you or for you to hear me talk about, you know, my experience riding the boost sled, I hadn't really rode the non turbo sled much. And then, um, uh, we got one here and, and it kind of stays consistent with, what we run here. I mean, if you look at the hours and miles on our boost sled versus the hours and miles on the stock one, which one has more? Stalker. The stalker. Yep. And you know, the boost sled is crazy. It's, uh, they did, uh, just an amazing job on making it, you know, it, I had high expectations, right? I mean, mm -hmm. we've ridden some incredibly monstrous turbos and um, I, it had a lot to live up to. And so we'll get to dive into all of that. And so I guess what I, what the whole point of this podcast is to help you guys with your decision for snow check. Um, there's so many dang options. And I think I've spent multiple days trying to figure out all the options. What's what? um, and so it's pretty crazy. You know, you, you literally can't get the new matrix chassis <coughs> without a slash tunnel in a 163. So for all the in-season models being a matrix chassis, um, axis chassis, nope, matrix in-season. Yep. See, you're learning. So in-season matrix, you can only get a 155. So 
If mm. you want to snow check a matrix, 163 or 165, that's the only way you can get it. You can't get it in season. Hmm. And the slash is the is only snow check too, right? Correct. Slash and boost are only snow check. So, again, to review, because it's 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 fairly confusing. Um, players has their hands full with trying to explain all of the options, and and you know it's tough for them. I mean, they obviously have reasoning behind limited quantities and snow check only, and all of that stuff. Um, so we're here to hopefully help that. So we'll, uh, we'll kind of start diving right into that. So again, uh, model mix, um, the new, obviously the new sled is the matrix chassis or matrix platform. Um, and then the slash is a factory short tunnel, which thank God we have a short tunnel. Finally, I am so tired of having you come into my house full of metal shavings <laughs> and smelling like coolant and welding and all of that stuff. So, um, and you know, what's really cool about it is they did it even better than what we had been doing it, you know, with, with the taper tunnel and the, the cooler, the way the cooler stops at the gas tank and it doesn't go all the way back, um, which really helps for snow buildup and, and all of that stuff. So again, we're going to try to to talk about as many features as possible. Um, Kyle has had a ton of time on both of these sleds, mostly the stalker, but um, you know, we've, we've been, uh, we've had our hands in them and got to, got to spend a lot of time. I mean, we have almost a hundred hours on that stalker. I saw that's impressive. Yeah. That's a lot. That's like, yeah. that's a lot. Um, and then, Bubba, you've got to take a spin on, you've got to ride the 155. You've got to ride all of them. Yeah. 55 Chaos Boost, 65, and and the Stalker. So, it'll be cool. You know, we obviously have three different um, ideas about, you know, what what sled works for us. And so, we'll we'll, we'll talk about that. Um, I guess, so, let's, let's start talking about, you know, the configuration and the layout of the chassis. So, we have Matrix. Uh, that's the, the new platform. We have Matrix Slash, which is the now new um, factory short tunnel, which is also tapered. And uh, the factory slash comes with the with a front cooler that extends all the way to basically the back of the tank. And so that is available only during snow check. And the Patriot Boost is also only available during snow check. Now. With the boost, Kyle, pop quiz. What models are available in Patriot Boost? Crickets. Hold on. Um what models are available? The Chaos 155. Yep. Hang on. <laughs> yeah. Hang on. Hang on. We'll have a fun story about uh, <laughs> Kyle's experience with the 155 <laughs> Chaos. Yes, you are correct. So 155 Chaos um, slash Patriot Boost. Okay, yep. Perfect. So there's and one. I ordered a 65 Pro Boost. Yep. Right? Yep. Two seven five. Yeah. That's, right? that's what and, I ordered. Yep. Exactly. So and there's slash. Two, there slash. Yeah. Good job. So there are a lot of acronyms. We. That's one thing. I, I'm lost. I don't know. I can't even remember what I ordered. <laughs> Listen. <laughs> not only are we building more Boost than Skidoo, <laughs> we're built. We have way more acronyms <laughs> and options. <laughs> Way more. Building our vocabulary. (laughs) Just winning. (laughs) Okay. So, uh, yeah. So, Kyle, you ordered an 850 Patriot Boost um, 165 with the 2.75 with the slash tunnel. So, Mm -hmm. um, uh, basically a short tunnel 165 in a pro profile. Yep. Yep. So, that's one option. And then you can also get it in a three-inch track as well. Um, all of them come with QD2, so all geared down, which is cool. All you guys who love that three-inch track, no more chain cases, you're getting the QD2 as well. Um, so let's dive into very first question with um, 275 and more boost. Um, you know, the 275 track came out last year. 
there was a ton of people running that track, uh, four pounds lighter, pretty cool technology on how they did that. All of the Canada guys were loving the performance and, and not only just Canada, but the guys who ride in a little bit that, uh, of that more moisture content snow, that two seven five is an absolute monster. Um, but, uh, we saw last year a little bit of problems with guys who were more accustomed to, you know, the tension or lack of tension that you could get away with running a two six or a three inch um, on the two seven five with that three point five inch pitch had having some ratcheting issues, and so um, you know, obviously, uh, track tension was pretty important there. If you missed it right out of the gate it could cause you some problems later down the road uh so a players has addressed that we've got to ride on our boost sled we do have the 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 brand new updated driver system kyle when, why don't you talk about the changes there so with the new driver system on the 275 we have a little bit shorter rail with a anti-stab kit between the rails the two wheels in between the the, the rail tips with the also uses the stock um rail tip nubs i guess you'd call them which is which nice is, which is new that's yeah. not you can't get that on any other anti-stab kit so it's really clean and there's no vibrations there and then the there's actually an added set of nubs on the outside of the track and that track's driven off a set of drivers it's almost an extra extrovert with a little bit shorter nubs that that has nubs into the both sides on the windows and to the two <sighs> nubs on the track so with that, we're seeing we're able to run that track pretty loose, like not pretty loose, like way loose, way loose, and get away with it. Yeah, which, which is, is nice because like oh man, that that allows like with track tension, you get vibrations just because how tight that track is. You got your rear bogey wheels running over fiberglass or, uh, or through the track rods, and you're getting vibrations when you have to run a track tight there. And with being able to run it loose, we're seeing. I mean. Well, you like let off the, the down, gas and it actually... Yeah, you get to... Co- it coasts. It's not like you have a parking brake on, so that's pretty cool. Yeah. Way, way cool there. And and I think you you touched on it. Um, we ran into... Because we were having to run the 275 so dang tight with the standard driver system to... The vibration is, is gone. Um, yep. And that's, that's, re- re- that's refreshing. Um, you can run... So couple big benefits with the new driver system. Um, you can run the track looser. Uh, you get basically free power, mm-hmm. um, less rolling resistance. Uh, it actually goes downhill without <laughs> having to give it gas. Um, and so that's going to answer all of those. Uh, and, and that's been probably almost... 80% of the questions we've gotten about, uh, because of the track job option, which we'll talk about that too. You know, um, you guys know me, I shed a tear when I didn't see the two six available. I, <laughs> I'm, I'm a two six guy and I'll still have a two six on my sled. Um, but you know, the majority of people are gonna, you know, we're, tr- we're picking bes- between the two seven five and the, and the three inch. And so, um, the three inch has its place, man. We, we, we've talked about this in, in many other podcasts. Um, there is a, a place and a snow condition where the three inch kicks some butt. Um, overall, I think the two seven five, I know, you know, we ordered all of our sleds with two seven fives. Um, especially after we got to run them with the new driver system, I think they're going to be really good. Um, so that's, uh, again, it was, it was a fix that was needed and a fix that is done right. You know, like you mm-hmm. said, having <coughs> rail caps on there, yeah. uh, being able to run the track loose. And so, so that's good. I know a lot of you guys have asked that question and, uh, maybe we can get Bubba to, uh, show you guys what that driver system looks like. Yeah. We'll yep. That in there. yep. So, cause it's, cause it's pretty cool. Um, Mm -hmm. how that works. So, so that's a, that's a big change. Uh, and that's something that we've gotten a lot of comments and questions about. So, so that's number one. Um, let's talk about, let's talk about another big one. The new, the new gauge, the new seven S gauge. This is something that, um, man, both you and I, Kyle, we looked at those gauges in this console, like this, you know, (laughs) we're like, that ain't going to last four minutes, right? <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. That, and, that was first thought for sure. Yeah. And 
I, <laughs> I, I had one where you were actually, we were riding up north and I came, I either bounced off an old track or something and I lost the edge, dude, and I freaking smoked a tree and I hit the console and you're like, easy on that side panel. I'm like, dude, that wasn't the side panel. That was the console. <laughs> and he's like, oh my God, is it okay? I'm like, oh, it's, it's all good. It's, I mean, I can, you can still see the, the, the tree mark on top of, of the stalker. And I was worried about it. And I promise you, we have done our best to destroy them. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> We're good at that. <laughs> um, the gauge is bitching. Um, it's, it comes standard. It's, you don't have the option of getting the accessory, uh, or the smaller gauge on the Patriot boost. Uh, you do have the option on the stalker. You can pick one or the other. Um, tell me what your thoughts are on the new gauge. It's pretty cool. Like the GPS thing is really sweet. Like, cause we have our, these two are paired and yeah. it's, it's pretty cool to see like where you're at. How much higher on the hill? You know? Oh, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> well, you set me up really. Yeah, good I did. I set you up you. for that one. But just like you can go back and look at your tracks, and you're not like it's funny. We don't really ever use GPSs right. because they're in our backpacks and they're kind of a pain to get to. But like it's pretty cool to just like have it right. You sit down, you turn the key on, and you can scroll around, look around at a topo map, and like see where your buddy's at and see where you've come from, and like you kind of. You do a lot better reading terrain on it. And then, obviously, just visual riding standpoint, like seeing RPMs and track speeds and temps and all that, it's really easy to see it. it I mean, it's right there in your face, and it's huge. Yeah. yeah. Completely yeah. redesigned, too. Like, the whole interface It's not just – it's not the same. There's a ton of options. Whoa. Oh, hey, and it's got a compass. <laughs> I know which way north is now. <laughs> 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 I, uh, I, you know, I, when I, there, there, there's a couple, couple things. Like if I, it's a, it's a thousand bucks option. It's a thousand dollar option. Go on the snow check website, hit the gauge thousand dollars. Whoa. Yeah, but man. You, we use it a lot and mm-hmm. it's really cool. It's intuitive. It's eat. And what I liked about it, I was like, I was a little worried. I'm like, man, I don't want to have to be like learning. A, I already can't. I mean, this phone's like <laughs> stupid enough, right? <laughs> but it's easy to use and it's helpful. Um, I all I can think about is when I'm up in Grizzly and that fog rolls in. Oh, and I could literally just pull up the map and like, okay, we gotta go this way. Yep. This was our yep. way in. I really Gri- Grizzly is a place that I make sure my GPS is charged every single morning. Yeah, yeah, that freaking BC fog. I don't know how you guys deal with it. <laughs> Obviously, you're going to love uh, the options of the gauge. So, um, yeah, the the gauge is sweet. Um, that kind of leads us to another part of the sled right by the gauge, um, the storage compartment. And mm-hmm. I, I, I mean, you guys have heard us rave and talk about, you know, one of the, like, top five things we ever put on our sleds is a helium hood. So we have the heated storage and all that stuff. And... Um, we have that now from the factory again. And yeah, it's, it's funny. You're going to hear us refer to this a bunch, but I mean, factory mod, right? Yeah. We have a short tunnel, heated storage, <laughs> narrow body work, nine pounds of boost. Freaking like it's a. S- well, and what's cool about boost. like something we were lacking on the axis a little bit was we had heated storage, but you couldn't put a whole lot in there. No. And like this thing, you can put. And it got stuff wet. And it that, got, yeah. That was, that was the thing. It, it got stuff it wet. It trapped water. Yeah, it trapped yeah. stone. This one, I mean, you can put a couple bottles of water, a couple pairs of gloves, a hat, and you still got room for your stuff. Yeah, I, and that's what I have. I have my, like, I literally have a Nalgene bottle, two Dasani water bottles, my hat, my, chi- I can have a bag of chips in there. <laughs> With my, I mean, I can fit so much stuff in there, and. You know, I was I was wondering like, was it going to get warm? Was it going to get wet? I mean, all of those things. And so far, again, like, you know, from a visual standpoint, or was it going to come open when you roll it over? Yeah, right. I mean, there was all of those. Things. Yeah. I mean, I haven't got stuck with this sled yet. But. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> okay. So maybe I have. Um, I. 
I love I love the storage, and it's something that we've needed. It's one of the th- reasons why the you know the the console piece looks as big as it does. Um, and when I first saw it, I'm like, dude, what the hell is that <laughs> thing? Are we riding like a like a, one of those Dakar bikes, or what's going on here? <laughs> you, you almost think that it, it's going to be the screen that's like diving back in there, you know? Yeah, and it's like that's going to be heavy. Yeah, but it's, it's a not. flat screen, dude. It's a flat yeah. screen. Yeah. <laughs> and now after riding the sled, I would if you tried to take that <laughs> off, I would freaking get my saw out and try to cut your hand off because <laughs> it's it's just so convenient to have everything there, right there. Yep. Yep. I think uh, one of the other cool things about having the seven S display too is the USB. So if something dies when you're yeah, it's right out writing. That's cool. It's, it, it was the same on the, the PIDD, but the sled had to be running for it to charge stuff, whereas this has the battery, really small battery. I guess battery. that's something. That's a good point, too, that these sleds have, our, even our non-electric start sleds, you, that gauge and that USB port's powered when you're not running. Yeah. Yep. So, so you can there, charge something if you need to. Yep. There's mm-hmm. a, a small 12 volt battery and it's pretty tiny. It's on the right hand uh, foot rest, uh, right, right behind there. And it's, so it's, it's hanging out there. And so like, like these guys say, you can, which is nice. You can have the key on um, and it, it's on a relay. So after a certain amount of time, it turns off, but you can like dink around with your map check out, you know, other features on your gauge while the sled isn't running and, and charge stuff like you guys are talking about. So, so that's cool. So, um, so that's a change. Um, you know, those are, those are again, two, two big ones that kind of get overlooked. Um, brakes, just, just looking at the sled here. Yep. L- looking at brakes. I'm the new, the new master cylinder and brake lever is designed for guys like you, Kyle. And she works good. Yeah, it's touchy. The levers so sensitive. Yeah, too, which is the nice. levers. Good. I like good brakes. The levers good. I've heard some people with concern of the plastic reservoir, which I mean, I, I mean, we've yeah. rolled them, we've thrown them into trees. Yeah, I mean, we've done everything to them. Yeah, we haven't seen any issues. Yeah, and and I think that concern comes from because the Skidoo one is is really exposed, and and you know, I I know there's they built guards for them and all that, and I'm not saying you can't break these, but man. If you guys only knew what these poor snowmobiles have been through, um, and that's why the, that's why we get them and why we ride them, and and again, you will see multiple tree marks on every component on our snowmobile. But <laughs> um, you know, we've we've had uh, good luck, no durability issues there. The new profile of the brake lever is cool. Um, we'll still be working on the heated brake lever. Um, and probably something adjustable potentially. Uh, but yeah, that's been, that's been really good. Uh, I think, I think one thing I, I've heard that I've heard a couple things is like, so is it, is it that much better than an axis? It kind of looks the same. I don't really see a big difference, you know, those types of things. Um, what, you know, you've got to ride sleds back to back, back to back. What's yeah. what get, give me, Give me the deal. What What do you think? The short tunnel is the real deal. I think a lot of people think of a short tunnel, and they think of hopovers, reentries, and that's the only way you can do that type of stuff. For me, like, I mean, that stuff's cool, too, and definitely a short tunnel is something that helps with that. But one of the, I mean, like, just everyday riding, those tight downhill turns, the side hills when you go too late and you're initiating that plan B too late, and that sled's trenching to get that thing to turn out and cut across that hill. The, the short tunnel's a real deal there. There's a lot of advantage to running that short tunnel just with everyday riding. It's not just for the, the tricks and the, the stuff you see on Instagram. Yeah. yeah. I uh, I won't forget this day. We were uh, above the high road, and I had my group, and all of a sudden I hear this pissed-off, wide-open sled. I'm like, well, that's not a client. Uh, and here comes Kyle Pulsifer. <laughs> and j- you happen to come up on Bubba's sled. <laughs> yeah. First time those power valves actually got wide open. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> um, so you you come up and you're like, man, this sled runs good. And so that was the first comment. And then the second comment was, damn, this 2.6 works really good in our snow. Because mm-hmm. I was riding a 2.75. Yeah, you were riding a 2.75. You were riding the stalker. Mm-hmm. But the third comment was, holy crap, 
this stock tunnel really hangs you up. Yeah. Um, and you, so those were your, your first three observations of the difference between, uh, you know, the axis chassis, which again is, has set the bar, Mm -hmm. um, and the new chassis that is, is taking its place. To yeah. rewind a little bit, Kyle was not riding the stalker that day because I was oh, upside was down the on the boost. Oh, you're right. <laughs> you're right. It was the boost. Like. But yeah, I mean, like, the and it's not like what we have now is unrideable. It's just how quick and like the the short tunnel, how quick how quick you can get it to turn. And it's not like it's kind of like when we went from the 800 long running boards to like our 850s, we were able to get these shorty boards. Mm-hmm. There's a there's a big difference, and I'd say the tunnel's even bigger than that, but it, it's a big difference. Yeah, yeah. Um, so those those are those are three really big ones, um, and and I concur, I agree. It's something that you can literally when you go back and forth, like, oh wow, that that is real. Um, I, I've got two more that. Now that we've got into that spring snow and we're getting onto that really steep stuff and, you know, being able to like elevator and all that stuff, it better be really steep to be able to elevator one of these new ones, which, mm-hmm. which tells you just how damn good it's going to be in that technical steep terrain. That spindle being further out because the body work is narrower it's going to keep that front end moving forward and with the short tunnel not hanging up i'm not kidding you guys like this will cut across something that you i promise you you will be uncomfortable that you're on that slope mm-hmm. but the sled is ready for the job and, and that, that's, that's awesome what you said there too with that like cutting across stuff before we we're like on something that's at that that steepness where you're like putting along and you're kind of potentially sliding down it a little bit these sleds I've found, there's been places where I've just held it pinned across something that's super steep and turned up, where maybe on the old sled you would have washed out or that tunnel would have hung up and you wouldn't have got traction. Like, there's there's a different, there's a, I mean, they're way more capable in that, in that aspect, too, where you're able to turn up something and carry that speed across something where you'd maybe wash out on the last, on, the, on our older sleds. Yep. And, you know, it's, it's interesting, and, and we've seen this as well with, our short tunnel setup like that we have currently on the axis, there have been times when I felt like if I would have had the stock tunnel back there, I could, I could have actually kept going Mm -hmm. instead of this wheelie over backwards. And I don't feel that with this sled, which is really odd to me. I think it's a little bit with how they have the rear suspension set up. I think we've, you know, we've played with that a little bit. We've softened it to, I mean, that boost sled, dude, it will literally... It's a tractor. You can point up anything, and it will go. And, mm-hmm. I, I mean, I, I've i done a couple posts where I, you know, I was telling everybody, like, I have had to re-look, relearn how to look at lines because I'm just so used to when having that much power with a short tunnel, I'm going to loop over backwards on my head. Mm -hmm. Um, if I try to do that and this sled won't do that. So I think they've done a really good job on, on that side of things that does give you a little more planted feel. So we've messed around with suspension settings, um, with that, which, um, I guess kind of brings us into our next deal. You know, the, they have the new option this year of the velocity shocks and for the pro, not just the chaos. Clicker. Now, yeah, right? yeah, clicker. Yep. yep, replacing the clicker. Yep. So it doesn't have um, a high compression and low compression adjust. It just has compression adjust, basically. Um, and the shocks for a stock shock, um, I they're they're good. They're they're better than the standard clicker from last year. I think that's cool. Um, I I still I mean. We put so much damn work into the Fox stuff that it's, you know, they're, they're, the velocities are, are better and they're doing a great job. And I think they fit a, a wide variety of riding. Um, but again, you know, we can still pick that apart and, you know, our, our Fox stuff works pretty dang good on, on the new chassis. It just, just makes it, um, feel more forgiving and fun and more plush. Uh, but again, I, I'm, I'm super impressed and, and happy with 
the improvements they keep doing on the shock stuff because it's it's something that you know we've needed to improve on for over the years um yeah we're just obviously just staring at the sleds here talking about them and you know reminiscing <laughs> about um our just our time on them and i guess you for me i i love this thinking about this you're <laughs> i was terrified our first trip where I brought you to go ride the new one. Yeah, that was a lot of trust. <laughs> I, I have no, a, that wasn't no, trust. They, that was like, pray to God what, that what please I, don't wreck it. What I have account. is a light switch. <laughs> I don't have a dial. I'm on, and I'm mostly just on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, your light switch is <laughs> The light switch on. is broken, and it's turned on. <laughs> oh, God. So, it was it was really cool. I we got We got the call in January to um we had some some really good early snow down south and and told uh told the engineer team hey you guys should come out it would be really good validation stuff down here and so they we we met up got to go ride a couple days and and that was your first opportunity to ride the boost sled yep. right um and and it and this is tough right we're we're talking about the boost sled and like how cool it is. And it's sweet that we have a factory turbo, but you can't damn get one. So, um, that (laughs) sucks. But at the same time, we still want to talk about it and still want to, um, educate you guys, get you pumped up, uh, especially for the guys who were able to, to put their hands on one. And, um, I, I won't forget. I mean, literally you, you were on one for about, Three and a half minutes. I came in hot. <laughs> you came in hot, and next thing I know, you're freaking upside, upside down, down, re-entering in like the. I mean, it was nasty. It was super steep. It was awesome, right? I came in hot, man. I was going for the top, but. Yeah. But what slide were you on first? Oh, a 155 Chaos on all of the boost. Hold on. Where's our rodeo button? Do we have a rodeo button? We no. need one. Straight up rodeo. <laughs> I I mean, that thing acts like it's going up, and I mean, it's going up at like 80. Mm-hmm. And then, like, but it has you a get, light switch. Too. You get to like 75 <laughs> miles an hour, <laughs> and you are going upside down. Like, not just like a re entry, like that thing is going to flip on you. Yeah. And, and that was so the snow we were riding that day, it was it was deep, it was sugary for down yeah. there, especially. Yeah. Pretty baseless early season. And um you got chaos. Got chaos. I was able to Oh, able you to, pulled it around. I was able to handle it, but you looked so late though. <laughs> it wasn't oh, no no no. Hold on. You didn't look late. We'll pull up the clip. He looked super early because he knew he was And all I see, so I, I pull up. And I'm above. Hi, I'm above you. Hi, Mark. I mean, you turned out. Let's see here. You tur- okay? So he was. Turned out. What's, he's parked there. <laughs> What's my I come excuse? around. <laughs> I come around him, and Jesse, and I don't. I mean, I made it up. I mean, quite a ways farther, but not a lot. No, <laughs> <laughs> made it up, and and then I I knew things were going south. Like this thing isn't gonna go up. Like I need to start com- plan B, right? Yeah. L- late. Pretty late. Probably. Pretty late. But still. Anyway, I'm I'm full re-entry, like, sled's out of the snow, and I'm looking over my shoulder below me, like, I mean, below Dude, me elevation-wise. what was funny is you looked so early, but you, like, were just, it wasn't <laughs> planned. You were praying, like, please do something that I need you to do right now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Luckily, it did. It came around, and, like, there's two Matrix boosts sitting below. These sleds don't exist. Yeah. And there, I'm upside, I'm mid upside down, coming back downhill, staring at these two sleds and two guys just staring up at me. And I'm like, oh God, this could end really, really bad. But luckily, I was able to come around and, and settle down and stop and regain composure. And I think the first, Jesse, the Polaris engineer that was there, the first thing that he told me, what, what did he say? He's like, these snow wheels don't exist. It was something he said something <laughs> yeah. along the lines of that, and he's like, "Do you know what that snow wheel costs?" <laughs> yeah, I'm like, "Okay, I need to take a couple deep breaths here, calm down." Not a couple, all of them. <laughs> the, the, the duct tape <sighs> on switch needs to turn God. down just a little bit. I'm like, "What have I done?" 
<laughs> I knew I should have left him in the shop. <laughs> <laughs> so, but so here's here's what's interesting about that was, um, so we have the players engineers, we have me, mm-hmm. and um, I had so they had another like concept sled there, mm-hmm. and I didn't I wasn't even looking at the other ones. I'm like, wait, what is that thing? Yep. Okay, I'm gonna ride this one. <laughs> And then those guys picked their sleds. They didn't want anything to guess, do that. Guess what the sled left I didn't, was. I didn't know that yet. <laughs> I didn't know that and, yet. And Kyle's like, I can't believe no one wants to ride this thing. <laughs> There's a reason. That thing's a hard to hang on to. They're wild. Wild. Yeah. So but. that's and, – and, and again – that snow condition and that train we were riding, that was not like the optimal weapon, right? That wasn't the no. sled of choice. However, it was super fun. I mean, if I, you want to be an Instagram hero, that's the snowmobile to have. I just and 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 Kyle, I guess so. So let's let's just tell. I mean, you you've ridden boost sleds. You've actually had some not super great experiences with boost sleds. You've you've yep. struggled with you know, runnability and uh, up at our elevation response, you know, all of those types of things, right? Mm-hmm. Um, what was your first reaction get jumping on the sled? <sighs> well, the first reaction was like... Hold on. I know your first reaction because actually we didn't tell this story exactly right. Your first thing, you were stuck. You remember when you got... You should see where I have this thing stuck. And I couldn't find you for like 20 minutes. And I had to go up and like get you. Hold up. Wait a minute. Oh, God. Our first line on that sled, you got flipped over on the log on the trail. And I, <laughs> oh, went, yeah, out you're right. <laughs> and I went out the top. Hold on. I got stuck first. You're right. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So you did go to the top. But at the top, what happened? I um, asked... Uh, the player's engineers, if it would be all right if I came back down and kissed him. <laughs> yeah, you did. As I'm like, I got passed by everybody. I'm like the lead dude. <laughs> I made it 12 feet into the line and I spun out on a log. I'm like, well, I'm an idiot. <laughs> okay, yeah, you're right. This story sucks. Rewind. <laughs> I'm okay. So, when, when did I get stuck? You remember you got stuck and you were so stuck in between these two trees and I had to come Oh, no, that was you. later. That was. That was three. That was actually well. We were talking about the minute mark. This you is were the down three minute mark, dirt. and that was when I <laughs> already did my first. Um, oh yeah, bit of damage to the brand new snowmobile. <laughs> yeah, that that's didn't right. exist yet. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Prototype part ripped it off. Yep. She gone. Yep. Okay. Okay. So fast forward. Um. So. Yeah. Okay. I get stuck first. You get stuck second. Whatever. Um. <laughs> What what did you what did you think? You jumped on the sled. You got to go ride it for the first time. I honestly haven't rode been much. Well, up until that point, I hadn't rode much turbos for like probably over a year. And getting on that sled, it's amazing how like rideable it is and how well it runs. Like the th- biggest thing I've always seen with a turbo is you've got to be able to ride to ride a turbo. Like you got to be able to ride fast. You got to be able to stay in boost. Like you got to be way ahead. Because otherwise, you just get yourself in trouble. You're upside down. You're you, you're getting stuck, or you're just relying on it. You're kind of turning into something, pinning and wiggling, and it'll take off eventually. But that sled, it's way more rideable. You can side hill it slow. You can take you can turn up something and take off, and it's gonna it, the power delivery is so smooth and it's so good all the way from the bottom that you're not just hitting that like wall of power that flips you upside down. Yep, that was the biggest mm-hmm. thing I saw that like. And the snow that we rode up, like, on that first line, it was kind of crustier and more set up towards the top. And that's the type of snow that you don't really want a turbo in. Mm -hmm. But, like, you can still ride slow on them and be in control and not just relying on all that boost. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think that's a good description because, you know, that's another question. How does it compare to your high boost boondocker stuff that you've built in the past? That, that, that's what I get asked a lot. And that's, what's pretty cool about it. Like, I mean, this kit, the, the players Patriot boost on pump gas, like at our elevation, which is where all my time is on riding this snowmobile, but like pump gas factory turbo is right on par with some of the gnarliest race gas intercooled turbos I've ever rode. Yeah. I, I would, I analyze it just a little bit different. I think 
you know, I've definitely ridden turbos with like more power for sure, but it was how you described it. It hit like a freaking brick wall and it mm-hmm. was so hard to ride and, and, and like we, we talk about it. You have to be a rider to ride a turbo that mm-hmm. has that type of power where with the factory sled, it's pretty amazing that it's like, holy cow, this thing is just going and somehow the skis are going forward and not just flipping over backwards. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, that's, I think that's been my biggest kind of my, my, my biggest impression of it was like, it's rideable. Yep. And the bottom end, I mean, I hate you. I hate the word lag. It almost got me grumpy. Anytime I was like, any, any way you can get this thing to not have as much <laughs> lag. I'm like, it's a turbo dude. Got 74 grams in it. Yeah. yeah like. It's yeah. It's got big weights in it. You have to like spool a turbo. You're going to have lag. And then you go get a jump on this thing. And it's which like, we're, whoa. what all the stuff that they have going on with like, the the what the pre way skate uh, before the turbo into the in, on the pipe and like the reeds in the back of the air box that can get air before the turbo needs to spool, all that just plays. I mean, n- and we're still pulling seventy eight gram weights. Yeah, and then like our new clutch, like all that stuff just compounds Works. and turns it into like a really rideable sled with the bot the bottom ends like as close to stock as it gets it almost it was, it was crazy the other day i was loading it into the trailer and you know we when we're feeling a little spunky on the carpet mm-hmm. dude it feels better than a stock sled because it it's got that response but then it's got that big weight too mm. you know so it's like rap, rap. um it's it's impressive they did uh they did uh, an awesome job with with that and so, you know, you guys have obviously seen, you know, our, our release video on the turbo and, uh, we've posted a bunch of, of clips on it. Um, and so you, it, it's, it's easy to say we, we say this stuff cause we get paid, right? <laughs> <laughs> Kyle, do you get paid to ride for players? Nope. No. Okay. Um, but but you do get to ride them. And, and again, I, what I was more curious for you was you've just, for the last two years, you haven't built turbos. Um, and I'll never forget both you and Andrew, you know, Andrew built a turbo last year, but didn't build a turbo this year, both you and Andrew, after riding the new sled, you came back to me and said, now that's a turbo I could ride. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, for sure. And that's what, I mean, that's what you want. And, and, you know, do we wish that we would have came out with the, the, the boost sled before Skidoo? Yeah. Oh yeah. Right. Um, I guess so to say we were the first, but I will say, um, and you can see from all of the things that make this thing so uniquely different than theirs. Like we actually build power above 6,500 feet. Um, the response is insane. And it's, you know, to see the type of track speeds that we've seen at our elevation is, is insane. stupid. Yeah. It's like literally stupid. I mean, I'll, I mean that GoPro clip, I watch it just about every other day just to like make sure, you know, make the, the hair raise on my arm. <laughs> that's fun. I mean, I came into that that shoot, and you've been in the, into that shoot before, and I had to hit my brakes going uphill. That just does not happen, mm-hmm. and it's it. We, we had both these sleds there that day. We did this yep. sled. There's about there's not too many people that could have got this sled to get up the places that you could go up at 50 miles an hour on that sled. Yeah, yeah, like and you're scratching to uh, get it done. Yep. That's nothing against that side. Just kind of shows you what. Yeah, and what that side's and doing. so and and I think I I think that's where this is going to be so awesome to talk about the, how this conversation is is going to shift. So, so let me ask you this, Kyle. Okay, I'm going to give you either one of these snowmobiles, but you can only ride one of them for the whole year. Which one are you picking? I should have known that was coming, man. So if I was a guy, let's just put it if I was a guy coming out like uh, I'm destination riding I'm gonna mm-hmm. ride good snow I'm gonna ride good snow I'm either I'm coming from Minnesota I'm gonna ride I'm leaving February 1st I'm gonna ride for 10 days I'm gonna plan that trip 
With like good snow. four or five days before it where the snow is at, I'm going to buy a turbo. Heck yeah. I'm going to buy that boost sled because I'm going to go somewhere where there's soft snow on top and I'm going to go climb some shit. And I'm going to flip it over backwards and do some fun stuff in the meadows too. But like the other part of me, if I live somewhere or if I ride places that I'm like going there no matter what and I'm in a position that like I ride every day or like I don't even know how to word it that like that, but if if I'm gonna ride a snowmobile every day, I'm gonna pick this one. Yeah, I'm gonna pick a stock sled. Yep, just because they're easier to ride. They're not such a handful. The they're really predictable. Mm-hmm. Um, you can hold them wide open without ripping your arms off. It's it's kind of a trick question. It's it's so dependent on what your riding style is and what you're looking to get out of it. Yeah, and that's and that's exactly that's we. I don't know how many messages I still need to answer. Um, I got <laughs> so, so I got eight more days until snow check, so <laughs> I'm really trying, but it's been hard for me to keep up with stuff. But um, that's what I've been asked the most is, what sled should I get? And it's so, man, it there I I can't answer that for you. Mm-hmm. You you have to answer that for yourself. And you know, Kyle, you did a great job right there talking about like, and and. <laughs> you know, that, that's your buddies. Mm -hmm. That's Andy and Dale and, you know, all those guys that they look at the forecast and they're like, Oh, it's a three footer. Dude, you're going to like, you're going to go ride a turbo. Yeah. Heck yeah. You're going to ride a turbo on pump gas and just like go kill everybody. Yep. And that's awesome. And that's great. Um, for the guys, you know, who are fortunate either to live out West or get, you know, quite a few days, or, um, he, he, here's my other thing. Like we talk about this a bunch is, um, what sled would make you a better rider? That girl. Stock, stock sled. The stock sled. Yeah. 100%. Yeah. No, no, no questions asked. I mean, you got to ride it like to get to the same places the turbo will go. You got to ride it more in aggressive. the trench. In the trench. You got to, you know, be more aggressive. You have to make less mistakes. And, and, and so, um, you know, for, for me, um, here's what I think that these two sleds, um, do for me is, you know, prior for the last two years, you guys have all seen, I've gone, you know, I still, I mean, I love my boondocker turbos. They build Buku power, Voke just like can dial them in and they run perfect. They run flawless. Um, and I literally run them 20% of my season. And the other 80%, I'm riding my lightweight 900 yep. and, or, and or a stock sled. And it's because of, it's just easier, man. You know, the, the so let's talk about weights. Uh, a lot of you guys uh, have asked, okay, so what is the weight? So the weight on the uh, Patriot Boost sled is 419 and the... Uh, turbo is 27 pounds heavier. So I think it was 447. I don't know if that math works out, but I, I'm pretty sure that one's 447 with a 165, and this ended up being 419. You do the math, Bubba. Um, so anyway, it's it's, tw- it's 27 pounds. Be 28 pounds. If that's Whatever. Right. It's 27 to 28 pounds. Okay. Um, <laughs> and and that's that's a big chunk. Okay. And yep, you're getting a uh, a bunch of horsepower and everything, but you know, wrestling 28 pounds on a snowmobile is, is something that is real. And so, um, you know, I've definitely trended this way of riding, you know, stock based sleds or, or, you know, I love my 900. I just, it's, it's the way a stock sled should be in my opinion, super responsive, gets up on top of the snow, builds more track speed and is literally like my go-to everyday sled. So, you know, that's, I look at, you know, an, a non-boost Patriot sled and I look at, so let me get this straight. I can buy a short tunnel tapered with like heated storage, narrow panels, um, and something that I can literally just stay neutral all day and, ride it and not use any effort okay sign me up mm-hmm. yep so put that's a, put a carl's 900 in it yeah and then you've got an animal put a 900 in it which that, that'll be my go-to and so um and i and i man i love i love that everybody 
was just so pumped on the short tunnel and turbo deal. And obviously Mm -hmm. with the numbers that they had available, those went quickly and, and for the guys who couldn't get one, they thought their life was over (laughs) and it's like, dude, you don't even know how good this other sled is. Yeah. It's, (laughs) it's awesome. Um, Bubba, we haven't got to chat with you a little bit. Uh, you've got to ride them all. You went to the, to snowshoot at West Yellowstone, shot some stuff with some guys, you got to ride them all. Um, Even a trail sled. How'd that go? <laughs> <laughs> we don't need to talk about the trail sled. <laughs> um, I, you know, Bubba, I would, you know, you've you've got to ride a year out here. You get to see what we do, um, you know, from a skill standpoint. Um, you know, you've progressed your riding. But, you know, the stuff you ride in Oregon and what you've ridden here, um, you know, what, Give us, give us your spiel on, you know, being, you know, uh, I would consider you a, a very typical mountain rider, right? You love getting out, um, comfortable both on the left and right hand side, um, but you're not going into Narville and trying to like win dollars with me and Kyle. Right? Yeah. So what, you know, what did, what did you feel between the different sleds? Yeah. So I rode for the first time we were on the, the shoot for the 22 and when I hopped on, I think it was a, I think it was a chaos, because we had a boost in the chaos. Yeah, it was a chaos, and that one, that yeah, that was a 165, no, 163 three inch chaos. Yeah, that orange one, and it felt very responsive. And I just did some like powder turns and like little hill stuff, and I was like, it feels a little bit different. And then when I went up to, um, when I spent the week in West Yellowstone, I hopped on all of them, and that's when I really noticed the difference in how these things go through the snow. I mean, it was like if I wanted to just even, I mean, I was just screwing around on it because we were shooting. And the biggest thing for me, like I saw when I wanted to go up, I mean, there were, it was just effortless to me coming from the axis. Um, and so I rode, well, I rode the 155 Chaos. That thing's gnarly. And then I came back here and actually the first sled that I got on when I got back from that was the 165 boost and I wasn't really expecting, I mean, I didn't really get into the boost too much out in West. And, uh, when I hopped on this thing, when I gave Kyle my sled that day, I was just trying to get it to wheelie and, you know, see what it had. And <laughs> I yanked on it one time and here I am going backwards. I was like, whoa, it, you know, cause like, like you guys said, it, it feels like the, like a stock 850 power at the bottom, but once, and it's so smooth, like you don't really, you can't really tell when the boost hits or that's at least how I kind of felt. Mm-hmm. You can't tell when it hits, like it's just, it's building boost all of a sudden. Um, and pretty soon I was on my back and then, uh, I was just kind of playing around with it and you guys were all up on the hill and I was screwing around in some trees and I had actually hesitated and I Weird. got down into this, I got down into this tree well <laughs> And, uh, I really kind of just wanted to see like how it would perform and like how it got on top of the snow. And I was in this tree well and it was pretty steep coming up and I think I had a GoPro of it, but I just literally unweighted a couple times and hammered on it. And it was right on top of the snow. I mean, it, it wheelied pretty good and got on top of the snow. And I was like, dude, if I was on my axis, I'd be buried. No, you'd be trenched out. Trenched out. <laughs> that word a hundred times. On the radio. Uh, yeah, I'll be right there. I'm a little trenched out. <laughs> What's that mean? He's stucker than shit. Yeah. <laughs> so, I need to roll it. Bubba, that's a, that's a, so that's a really good analogy. And it's something that we've seen from turbos for since like the dawn of turbos is you cannot replace track speed with anything. Track speed is insane. What yeah. it will get you out of. Um, turbos will get you into trouble, but turbos can get you out of trouble. Yeah. So, um, I think that was good. Um, the whole time that you're talking there, I'm thinking, I'm like, oh man, the next most asked question and something that if you guys have lasted through this whole podcast, which I don't even know how long we've been talking, but, um, do I buy a pro or do I buy a chaos? I got that question from a lot of my Uh, buddies. And, Gosh dang. Pro or MK. You buy a pro. You buy a pro. Unless you want a chaos. Then you buy a chaos. chaos. (laughs) Ah. 
So if you're getting a boost. So so here's here's the thing, Kyle. Um, we so I'm gonna you just said a pro and you said it very confidently, but I'm gonna throw something at you. Yeah. Okay. Um, and and you and I are on the same page on this, especially because this year is our first year we've got to see firsthand both of them side by side, 163s, 155s, you know, with clients on them, with us on them. I mean, we both, when we ride them in our snow, in our terrain, we're like, we are pro guys. Like, without question, I'm a pro. I want to go up. I don't want to wheelie. I don't want to, like, it It doesn't bother me that in the meadow that I have to, like, literally do something just a little bit different. I don't even notice it. Mm-hmm. When I do get on a chaos in the more medium terrain, it's like, oh, this thing is pretty nice, mm-hmm. right? But as soon as we go get into the stuff we like to ride, we all we instantly know like oh my god i wish i was on a pro okay yep. but hold on let me sam well, and toby yeah yeah we had we had sam peterson toby shepherd two awesome hill climbers on the rimshaw circuit they show up here with in because in their train in their snow at home chaos 55 chaos we're gonna go kick your butt on a little 55 mm-hmm. sweet they show up there with the, these two things. I'm like, what the hell are you guys riding? They're showing up on 120s. <laughs> <laughs> and, I mean, they rode them good, but it was like, I mean, literally, like, Kyle and I just had, like, these little sparkles in our eyes all the time. Because yeah. we were like, you guys want to go up there? They're like, where? I'm like, okay, follow us. Yeah. You know? and, mm. and, you know, they ended up, you know, really adapting well. and like Riding the crap out of them. Riding the the bejesus out of them. Yeah. But, but so, so th- that's one direction to go, but I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to throw a different spin to you. Prior to Jackson, you got to go to Alpine. Okay. And you mm-hmm. got to ride some of that snow and some of that terrain. And let me, let me, let me ask you this. Okay. In, in that more consistent snow, that more open terrain, um, still really steep, right? There's mm-hmm. still steep and there's still trees and all that stuff. Did your mind change at all with what it was? I'd still ride a pro, I think, but I'd maybe run a 55. Mm-hmm. But I'd still run a pro profile. Mm-hmm. Just because I, I know what it does. I know the way it'll come out of a hole. Yeah. I know the way it lifts. Like, the lift is the biggest thing for me, and I just feel like the pro lifts better. Get, and when you say lift, get out of, on top. Yeah. 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 And, and I think that's the biggest thing that I have felt with the, the chaos. And it's something that, you know, since I got to ride in 19, the, the 155 chaos and, you know, with me riding it and being aggressive and that year we actually had a, a pretty dang good snow year here. I was like, dude, I can actually, like, if I ride this thing, I can make it go do some stuff. But then I get someone on it who is maybe a little less aggressive. Um, and they would hesitate just a little bit and that lift you're talking about you lose Mm -hmm. and the instead of the that drive going forward like what a pro does does that that the the that initial and again our a chaos isn't a skidoo you know where Mm -hmm. wheelies over backwards does freaking mouse traps on demand it it doesn't do that it still has a ton of of the pro DNA, but it, what it does is it has that little bit of, it's almost neutral, right? Like it's not wheeling, but the, the skis aren't on the ground. It's in this like neutral ground where it's like, I want to get going, but I have to let off a little bit Mm -hmm. because it wants to lift. And again, dude, in medium terrain, that feel is unreal. Like literally you like move your eyeball and it turns and it initiates and like it is so enjoyable to ride in that stuff and like on the medium hillsides where you're like maybe on a pro i'd be wrong foot forward on a chaos i'm just like neutral hanging Mm -hmm. out so it's really cool and so you know again to to go back to the question well what should i what should i get i'm like i have no idea what you should get like what do you want to do what's your agenda yeah what do you want to do and you know, for, for Kyle and I, you guys see our agenda. It's our agenda is to go take his dollar. 
And the only way we're going to go take a dollar is I got to get a notepad out and freaking write 18 <laughs> rules out and get above every damn log and head wall that there is. <laughs> and I'm not going to. In the right direction. <laughs> In the right order, direction. And, uh, oh, God, I hate you. <laughs> um, and it's, so it's, it's why we ride a pro. And, you know, it's funny, though. The other day I was riding my 900. And I was like, dude, I freaking love this sled. I cannot believe what it goes up. Can't believe what it does. And I let, dang, who did I let ride it? I let someone ride it. TJ? Was it? No. Was it that group? <sighs> you didn't ride I was thinking, group. oh, damn. It's all running together now. End of the season, I'm like burnt and over it. But anyway, I let someone ride it. And then I got on, it was actually a 163 Chaos. And I'm like, dang, I got a lot of steering effort on my sled, right? Mm. And it's the way I have my sled set up because I don't, I'm going to sacrifice a little bit there so I can go up. And, but with my short tunnel, I can still re-entry if I need to. But um, I, it was interesting. I'm like, oh, dang, I do have a little ski effort, right? Or mm-hmm. steering effort. And um, so... But again, it's it's a give and take, and so that's again. I'm not going to when you message me. I'm not going to tell you what sled I want you to get. I'm going to tell you you should get the sled you want to get. Mm-hmm. Like, don't buy the sled that I want to ride. Right? I mean, that could be totally different and not the sled you want. Um, you know, the pro is it's it's known, it's trusted, it's proven. Um, if you want to be a good technical rider, buy a pro. Um, if you love like that more playful feel, the chaos is your go-to and, and it's awesome that we have that option and that, and that's great. Um, I know a lot of guys are, are a little bummed that there's no 165 chaos Patriot boost. Um, that's, um, I'm with you on that. I'm not sure why that sled isn't there. Um, but in the end, the cool thing about with a 165 Patriot boost in the pro with a short tunnel, it's going to change the way you look at terrain forever. I promise you that mm. it'll, it'll do some gnarly stuff. Yep. Um, what else do we got? Yeah. I, I'll, I'll touch base on this. I, I'll, I have a ton of videos on this because I've been really pumped about this. Um, the, the new, um, lock and ride system uh, that we have for our tunnel bags and everything. Gosh dang, that's been good. No more. I mean, this time of year, the trails are just, just brutal and like, you know, bag slapping on the back of tunnels and like that whole deal. And that's all gone now. And you literally like, you know, it's a quick detach, like, like, Kind of, it has some of the technology from the Razor World, where you, I mean, you literally just pull this up, and take it out, and the new bag has been awesome. I've been really happy about that. So, um, guys who, um, you know, and you can configure it differently. You can have a small bag with a gas rack, which if you have a turbo at low elevation, you might want to carry some gas. I'm just telling you, <laughs> especially on that deep day, um, they're thirsty, very thirsty. Um, let's talk about the clutch though, real quick. On the, on the boost sled, mm-hmm. um, new, new clutch, uh, with a roller bearing, much like the razor technology. So no belt, adjust, no belt deflection adjuster. Um, so far so good on that clutch. It's been, it's been pretty awesome. Uh, wider roller, which is kind of cool, different new weight profile, light weight. Uh, so it's almost a pound lighter than the P85. Uh, which also helps with the response. Huge, yeah. Yep. On on the sled. So uh, so far so good on the clutch. I think that's that's been a, a good setup for the secondary clutch. We've had to we change the helix a little bit for our high elevation. But man, that those six to eight guys that the sled comes set up with. I mean, it's running just this monstrous helix and big weights because it's just building so much damn power so quick. So. It's pretty good there. Um, been pretty happy with the air intakes on the new sled. Um, even on, I rode a really deep day at Wolf Creek. Um, 
and it did pretty good. I still think there's we're gonna see there's definitely some room for improvement when it's like the mega deep day. And you know, even I mean, you name any stock sled and it's if you plug one end or the other, um, you know, you can run into some some stuff. So we'll be we'll be working on some things there, but you know, overall pretty happy with the air intake. I love the sound of like the turbo side of things. The stalker's been rock solid. Um, let's talk. Let's real quick. Um, the first thing that we noticed when we got on the the Matrix chassis, all those sleds we rode had six inch bars. <laughs> it's crazy. I can't huh? do that, dude. It made the whole sled feel for lack like to exaggerate a little bit. It made the whole sled feel bad. Mm-hmm. Just because we I both we both felt like. Why can't we keep this thing like we and it wasn't it wasn't when we were going across the hill is when we were going down. I just haven't even rode six inch bars in a couple years. Right. How about that first year? I thought I knew what I was talking about. (laughs) Kyle (laughs) freaking shows up. Oh, yeah. Uh, I'm like, Kyle, dude, you get to order a sled. What what do you want to order? Let's get them six. inch. Let's get those six inch mid bars. I'm like, dude, what are you like? Five, six. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. You're a solid five eight, uh, but I'm like, dude, I am. I'm still growing. I am six foot tall, and I run five inch bars. But you do whatever the hell you want. You obviously look like you know what you're doing. <laughs> no, yeah. I mean, I'm not. That that was definitely an huge, eye opener. An wasn't eye opener. It? Yeah. Like, I haven't rode a sled with them bars in a long time, and like running these sleds with them taller bars, like. We dropped them all the way to a four inch bar, which is an inch shorter than the factory option, which is five, which is the players' lowest bar. And I mean, with this sled, I think that's even more important. And because we're just able to get so much closer to the sled and like pull that sled that much farther to us. That that that's a good point, Kyle. And and I didn't I didn't understand why the the chassis felt, and it wasn't necessarily the chassis felt taller, but you you brought up you just nailed it for me the reason that the bar felt tall even like a low bar i'm like why you know a five or six inch bar felt taller to us is because with the sled being narrow body work narrower in the back you were able to bring the sled closer to you and when you can bring it closer to you you can see where a tall bar would be more up in your chest Mm -hmm. versus a lower bar being down lower where you can use the core of your body that's a really good point Mm-hmm. Good job, Kyle. That makes sense. Well, good for something. You are. So, <laughs> so yeah, we, no. on both our sleds, the first thing we did when we got them, we put, um, you know, we, we've got our four inch bar that we've got through skins and it's crazy, dude. Like when I, and, and now riding that bar and I go back to an axis chassis with a five inch bar, it feels tall. It feels tall. And that was something, even with like my hill climb setup, I wanted to do the four inch bar, like. For sure, if not three inch, because like you're th- you're going uphill. If you're mm-hmm. coming downhill, it, that doesn't matter. Yeah, you don't want to come downhill. Yep. And the reason why I didn't is because I rode, I borrowed a, somebody else's sled for a different class, so I wanted to ride the same thing. But like that, like that uphill stuff with it, with that low bar, being able to get that much lower to that sled, and that sled when that sled moves, it moves with a taller bar. It's exaggerated, and it, that that's that's huge with these sleds. Yeah. I think even that's definitely bigger than our axis chassis even. Yeah. Yeah, I I agree. Um and and watching your hill climb both your practice footage and your actual footage, you could see man when you were going uphill, you, dude, your elbows were in your like way up here. Mm-hmm. And so that'll be I know you'll be making that change for for next year. Yeah. For sure. Um, well, cool. Well, I think we we're, we're getting close to wrapping a couple of things up. Uh, a couple more questions that I know we've had, um, will like my heated brake lever work? No, it won't. The master cylinder is different so that we're, we're working on that. Um, how about my diamond S silencer and all that kind of stuff? Um, as far as I know, all of that, uh, stuff will work, uh, that'll cross over. So that's cool. We've got a new front bumper that we're working on with skins. Our Fox stuff. Um, this is a really big bummer for you guys who bought shocks this year. 
um, up until like literally probably first of April, all of our stuff was going to work. But with the change in the drivers and they actually changed the rear idler or rear upper idler wheel location, they set that uh, inboard um, to help again with um, just a, a, a smoother uh uh, track rotation and, and less vibration. So, um, unfortunately we're having to reconfigure the rear track shock for our Fox stuff. So, um, your front ski shocks will work, but the rear track shocks, we're going to be doing a little bit of tweaking to make that work. So that was a big question. Um, tunnel bags, your current tunnel bags are not going to fit on the new chassis. There's no T slot anymore. However, um, if for you guys who are keeping your axis chassis, you can get the new lock and ride, uh, system, uh, and you can put that on your axis chassis, which is really cool. I actually did that to my 900 axis that I have, and I've been really happy with that. So those are kind of the, the big ones, I think. Um, and we've had a blast riding them. I haven't really ridden much. Looking else. at them, man, we've put some beauty marks on them. Dude, we have annihilated these things. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they're they're beautied up. Yep, that's why we ride them. That's that's it's it's why we ride them. We've we've put a ton of time in, in them. We've spent a lot of time with um, you, the engineers talking about you know just all the things that um, you know kind of the last minute tweaks and and refinements and man i cannot wait for you guys to get your hands on them they're i can't wait for them first few videos to pop up yeah people at 8500 rpms on nine pounds of boost upside down <laughs> in next december and January. yeah man that december <laughs> snow is gonna be good Oof. yeah it's gonna be awesome um well i i hope I hope that helps guys. I, I hope, um, you know, for those of you guys who got your hands on a Patriot boost, I hope that makes your summer even that much longer to try to, uh, wait until your new sled comes. Um, for those of you guys who weren't able to get one, you really wanted one. I hope, um, you know, just hearing us talk about just how damn good that stalker is, um, and the changes in the matrix chassis, um, it, it's, it's legit. It's, it's the real deal. And it's, it's again, you know, I, I think about still, you know, my 80, 20 ratio, right. My 80% on, you know, my non turbo sled and 20% on my turbo sled, even with how good the Patriot boost sled is, you know, that ratio, it's going to change, but I don't, I, I don't know how much it's going to change. I still so much enjoy the feel of, of that lightweight sled. Um, mm -hmm. and so, you know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm optimistic on, on what the season's going to, uh, bring, but I know most of my emphasis is going to be on building another lightweight non turbo sled. And, but trust me, the old Patriot boost sled will be, that's what I'm looking at too. I'm going to build, I'm going to like my boost sleds, you know, be pretty much pretty close to stock. And my 900, I'm still going to build a lightweight 900, but I'm looking forward to them 20% days when we, like, go for it. Yeah. To have something where it's it, it, it's a different world. And, it is like, what you can do on a turbo is n different than anything. Yeah. It's got to be the right day, though, for me. Yeah. Yeah, and, and I agree. And, and I think, you know, the one thing that I – Ha I'm going to have to look at it different. And you actually, you have with, you've been riding an 8.3 gallon tank, um, over the last couple of weeks and li literally coming to the truck. Well, I had to give you gas the other day <laughs> and then literally coming like, like out of gas, like literally, Hey guys, can you push pull, it in pull the trailer? The trip? <laughs> and, and that's going to be, that is a concern on the new boost sled. Mm -hmm. Um, I, on one of the film days, I had, I ran out of gas at three thirty, and, and then I <laughs> grabbed my siphon to go siphon gas out of the stalker and I can't get my damn siphon in there. So we got, we got some, <laughs> we got a little work to do on, on that side of things. Yep. So they're going to be a little thirsty. Um, so plan your, your storage accordingly, um, on the slash tunnels, like, especially on a 65, you can't fit a large tunnel bag with, 
um, a gas rack. So you might need to do a small bag with um, some sort of gas storage. So mm -hmm. that's something to keep in mind. But um, I'd love to hear if we missed something that you guys had questions about, make sure you leave them in the comments. Um, it was nice being able to do a podcast again. It's been refreshing. Um, I, uh, I would say I'm sorry that we haven't been able to do any since whenever the hell the last one was, but dude, I just couldn't do it. It was too much. Um, we were down a guy, my boys stepped up. I had to be working a lot and had to hang out with my family every now and then to make sure they still love me. <laughs> and so we, uh, we weren't able to do as much as we wanted, but we'll, um, it's get, it's slowing down and there's still a lot of information that you guys want to know. And so we'll be doing a bunch. I'll be grabbing Kyle. Uh, let's see. I'll have to do podcasts with him at about 1230 at night. <laughs> that's about when you get home. <laughs> um, but it'll be, uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to the summer. We got a ton, a ton of fun stuff. Um, we haven't even got to talk about, uh, I mean, there's so many cool things that have happened throughout the season. Um, I can't wait for you guys to hear, you know, Kyle's recap of Jackson. Um, uh, man, I'm so proud of you, dude. It was so fun watching you. Um, you know, that hill, that hill is a beast. She's and a beast. It, she's a beast. And for you to go in, in your first year, and get over the top, qualify a nine mod, eighth place in in the final, um, and with what had to be one of the most spectacular get offs of the weekend. That's what I. Yeah, it was. I actually. mean, you almost if the if this if the ski run would have been going, if, or if the if the <laughs> chairlift would have been, been at the right on, time, you could have nicked someone's toe. That would have oh, been yeah. impressive. You know, if I would have been there, I would have grabbed your ski loop and I would have taken you to the top, and you would have got a time. Drop me at the thirty. <laughs> drop me at gate thirty-two. <laughs> um, so I think um, you know our plan is to we'll uh, we'll knock one more podcast out before uh, Kyle and Bubba take off and uh, and go back home for the summer. I think that one will be a lot of fun. And then I am going to try to figure out how to do this by myself, Bubba. You're gonna have to like like. Like, show me how to do all this. And then that, or I'm just going to have to get pretty good at the... Flying back and forth. Yeah. Hey, you bought a new dirt bike. I'm in. I know. I can't wait. We're going to have some summer adventures. Yep. It's going to be a lot of fun. So, anyway, uh, again, I hope you guys enjoyed uh, this, this review of the 22s. Um, I know there's a lot of content-hungry people out there. We've got just a couple, uh, eight days until snow check ends. Limited quantities available on uh, the Matrix Slash. So hopefully this helps with that. Uh, Patriot Boost is sold out. But, um, you know, again, some good information for you guys who have got one on order and who may uh, get their hands on one come this fall. So, uh, leave your questions in the comments, or you can always hit us up, uh, on our website at chrisbrand.com or flood Kyle's, uh, <laughs> inbox on Instagram. Um, how, I'm how are trying. you doing? I'm trying. I might be a couple weeks behind. Like, I'm a couple months, so you're doing way better than me. <laughs> some people, so some people have to think I'm pretty bad. When People I think I'm a like, dick. A, I know, like, the question that they asked, they probably already figured out. So, mm -hmm. I still respond in hopes that maybe it helps, but... Yeah. I know. I feel the same way. I feel bad about it, but... Try We're trying. Keep, try to keep up. We're trying. So, anyway, I hope you guys have uh, enjoyed all the, the posts and the Instagram, and and um, I quit doing dollar bets with Kyle because he's a jerk about it, um, but you never know. I went to law school over the summer. Yeah, you did. <laughs> I could tell. <laughs> Uh, but we still had it's in the fine print, man. We sure <laughs> still did have a ton of fun this season. We had a very challenging. Where are we at right now? I'm plus three. Plus two. You're plus two. I'm minus two. Okay. Cause, cause of Jackson. We've got three days to finish this. Okay. So I'm plus two. Yeah. It's about right. I've got a little plaque for us too. <laughs> <laughs> cool. uh, you know, I am the reigning champion. No, I call that Last season. year? No, COVID. <laughs> oh, bullshit. <laughs> no, that season is void because of COVID. 
<laughs> plus eight. Plus eight. That's pretty good. Plus eight uh, on the year. I totally forgot about all of that. I I didn't. I'm I, gonna claim that one I, forever. I, I, I thought it was twelve or something. I don't know. Plus eight, but um Who's so, so uh anyway it, it, it'd be a fun podcast to talk about you know our season it was probably one of the most challenging seasons we've ever had from you know a snow standpoint guide standpoint um but in the end we had literally pro uh, in my in literally one of the most rewarding seasons from a client standpoint um that i that i've ever experienced from because because we just worked our butts off and, and I, man, I, I love, I love the challenge. I love the challenge of just things not, I mean, if things were easy and smooth, I mean, I guess that's nice too, but <laughs> we, we persevered and we learned a lot. And, you know, I, I learned a lot about myself this year and, my approach still. And I, I love learning and I love both learning and failing because it ends up still learning. And there we had all of it this year. So we'll try to get, we'll try to get one of those talked about too. Um, but it's, yeah, it's good to be back on the podcast. So Bubba, try to get something done here with this thing before (laughs) snow check. So we don't (laughs) sound like idiots. (laughs) Awesome. Post tomorrow. Anyway, Kyle, thanks for uh, everything you do. It's another, well, it's 10.50. Another half day for us. Huh? <laughs> Man. Dude, I was looking at what you got accomplished today. Let me, let me, for those of you who, I mean, who's who the hell is still listening after an hour? <laughs> anyway, Kyle, you, you took a chassis bulkhead that showed up freight today. You pulled it in the shop, and you completely built a snowmobile. Had her started at about 10 o'clock. Yeah. Okay. Then you went over to, we had um, a 900. We had a cylinder that got overnighted, and we had to build a 900. With the, And the motor was out. Motor was out. Mm-hmm. Had that thing about, you had that thing fired up about 2 o'clock. Mm-hmm. You had... The left side of your bulkhead that you had a little run in with a tree. I need. Oh, <laughs> no, 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 no. That was the rock. That was the rock at Jackson. <laughs> hey, when are you going to let me post that right? That tree. Ah, uh, you, you can. I forgot about it. I should, yeah, probably, yeah, I we should probably get on that. I really hit that tree. You did. <laughs> so Kyle did a bulkhead, a full chassis swap, a 900, and you almost got. That I put other- a. Put a crank in that other one. And you got to put a crank in that other one. And then, gosh dang, I don't know what the hell else you did today. <laughs> you know what I got done today? Nothing. <laughs> oh, bullshit. Jeez. That was, it. that was crazy, dude. You have become one incredibly skilled wrench. Um, I literally, it's, uh, I mean, it's all to plan. I mean, I can't get the proper tools out before you have like, the coolant drained and the head off to do a 900. <laughs> so um, kudos to you, man. You've uh, you've busted your ass. You're you're you are the machine, and so <laughs> I appreciate all the work. And it's pretty cool to watch. Um, you know, just all the where you have come from from all of it, right? The writing standpoint, the 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 knowledge of the parts to the working of the sleds and you're uh, you're you're an animal, dude. It's awesome. Thanks. It's awesome to watch. Thanks. I'm just trying not to burn you out. So, <laughs> um, so we'll uh, we'll be talking about that uh, in uh, in a future podcast. And the next one, will I think we got to do the Jackson one. Yeah, that'd be a fun one. Okay, there's well, lots of people that want you back. I know, man. I do. Um, and I I said I will come back, no problem, as long as I have you know. Either Andy Thomas's or <laughs> Keith, Keith Curtis's sleds. Sleds. I think they'd do it. I think they probably would, which <laughs> I need to like be careful what I what I say because they probably would. But um, I miss it, man. You know, I I I more miss. Um, I love just hanging out with the guys. Mm-hmm. Um, the hill is the hill. Um, I I like that challenge, of course. The hill is just different. It's it's where I always struggled with it was 
it's so much different of a mindset than what I'm used to. Mm-hmm. And it's, it's really hard. And I think with your racing background, um, from the motocross side, I think that really helps you. Um, my racing background was, I completely sucked at snowcross. <laughs> that was my racing background. Um, and so now again, I do, but but what I enjoy is I would love to learn how to ride that that style, and I think it would be something that I could I could bring to, you know, my world a little bit. Um, there's things that apply, there's things that don't. But you know, when you, I really enjoy watching the live stream on the Rimshaw stuff. Um, you know, watching Keith and Andy and Luke and Blaine and and like, like all of those guys that just go, I mean, they are literally like, they're so much faster than me. I mean, they're, it's incredible to watch. Yeah. The shit that they go into pinned is pretty insane. It's insane. And so I, I, lo- i I mean, that intrigues me. I think it would be cool, but you know, here's my problem is I don't want to just show up to Jackson with like literally and I've done this before and I didn't, I just didn't like the feeling like I show up, everyone expects me to do good, but I'm literally on a sled that sucks. <laughs> like that's not set up correctly. I've haven't practiced once. I don't even know what the hell side gate, uh, uh, side of the gates I'm <laughs> supposed right. to be on. Red, right. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, and you know, with, with, and I don't, I don't like that because I want to, I want to succeed. I want to win. I want to, you know, be that person that I work so hard for. So, um, if we're going to do it, I, I got to go all in and, and, and that's pretty exciting too. Mm-hmm. It's, it's encouraging. So we'll talk about all that. Um, appreciate you guys' time. This has been a long podcast, but, um, you know, a lot of you said, we don't care how long it is. We'll listen to you guys ramble forever. <laughs> so dude, hour 31, not bad, not bad. It's 11 o'clock. You know, I was way past my bedtime. <laughs> so Anyway, awesome. Thanks, guys. Uh, Thanks for tuning in, and uh, peace out until next time. Thanks. Thanks, guys.